Um, so I'm proud and happy to be here to have a little uh, lesson with you about digiscoping. It's, it's really impressive how many people are interested. Uh, and thanks also to the, to the guys and al also to Ehrlich that he, can, uh, that he gave us the opportunity to have a little presentation here about the products. What I want to talk to you in the next hour or one and a half, depends a little bit on your interest, a little bit on your question, is the story about digiscoping. Digiscoping is getting more and more popular. It started already in the 90s, uh, where the digital cameras came up and people start to combine telescopes, binoculars, with cameras, with digital cameras. Um, we were more or less part of the game since the beginning. We produced different kind of adapters, but nowadays, depending on the new telescopes, depending on the new systems, what we're using here, we developed telescopes for using with your eyes to observe and also to use them in combination with SLR cameras, system cameras and compact cameras in a really, really good quality. And the quality is now much better than just a gimmick where you put a camera behind a telescope. It's, it's really a quality what you can expect, which is sometimes very, very similar to um, the big lenses, 800 mil lens, 600 mil lens. And this is the reason why uh, we have really a lot of speeches, lessons, um, also in front of photographers, professional photographers, who see here and there an opportunity and a chance to use that digiscoping, because the main advantage is a long focal length. So you cannot reach any, with any systems in the world, you cannot reach that kind of focal length with all advantages and disadvantages. And this is what we, or what I want to talk about uh, the next hour, because I want to explain you a little bit how to get from these pictures to pictures like these. Focal length is the issue. Focal length means you have high magnification, so that means you have the advantage that you can be far away from the animals, and especially for those people of you, or for those guys of you who don't want to spend nights in tents uh, to take pictures of animals, digiscoping could be really a good opportunity, because you still have a little bit more time, because you are further away um, than with normal systems. Before I jump into the adapters and the camera settings, I want to explain very briefly um, the product issue. The funny thing is, from our side, from Swarovski Optic, it would be very easy to explain digiscoping because we are producing telescopes and an adapter. So probably the next five slides are very easy, but the complex thing is what kind of camera works uh, for me? That's more or less the question. So are you a user who is using SLR cameras, system cameras, compact cameras? It depends also where you want to use those digiscoping equipment, and this is more or less the interest thing, and that is the big challenge for us as, as producer of telescopes uh, to, to uh, recommend really cameras. Everybody of you is using different kind of cameras, has different kind of experience with cameras. Uh, you want to reach different kind of levels with your systems, and our job is now to fulfill all your wishes, which is more or less impossible, but I can explain you a few things, what you can do here. Um, we call these new telescopes, and this is what you can see here in front of me, X telescopes. X is really standing for the next generation, for maximum ease of use, for flexible usage, and for excellent image quality. Um, the advantage of this system is that you are very flexible. This is the first time that um, um, an optic company produced telescopes where you interchange now the lenses. So very similar to uh, SLR cameras and lenses, you have here more or less the same system now. You choose one eyepiece module, angled or straight, because it's always a huge discussion out in the field, should I use a straight one or an angled one? Especially when we go for SLR cameras, I would generally recommend a straight one. But of course, if you observe birds, for instance, or if you observe for a longer period of time, an angled one is more recommended because it's more convenient to observe uh, than having always the head in front of you. It's easier when you, when you can look through the angled version. And now it's the first time that you can choose different kind of objective diameters. You can choose 65, 85, 
and 95. And depending on these three models, you have different kind of focal lengths. With the 65 and the 85, you have a magnification from 25 to 60. And with the 95, you have a magnification from 30 to 70, because the 95 has a bit longer focal length as the other ones. Uh, so we have an optical system which is called field flattener. So we have more lenses probably than in other solutions. They correct the distortion. So that means you get really a perfect flat image. And that was a huge challenge for us to design a telescope which can be used with a human eye and with an adapter which can be used for SLR cameras. Because these are two different kind of things and these... Um, um, Calculation is quite complex. So HD optics. HD optics means we are reducing color fringes. Color fringes could be horrible, especially when we take uh, pictures from black animals on, on snow, for instance, when you have those uh, magenta or blue, yellow color fringes around, that will be horrible. So therefore, we have these HD lenses, but also the whole optical system is calculated for these designs. So HD is more or less just our, our turbo inside of the, inside of the optical uh, principle. 100% field of view. Very important when you observe with your glasses, especially when you're out in the field, sometimes uh, you use sunglasses. Also, sunglasses are sometimes recommended before you get sunburned on your eye. That means you can use really 100% field of view. I'm not really sure how often you have looked through a telescope or through a binocular, but if you use your glasses, you see immediately that it looks you like you look through a pipe or through a tunnel, and with these systems, you still have the feeling that you're really in the middle of the image. And this is one of the main advantages of our system. As I mentioned before, it's quite easy to explain the, the telescopes. Now we come to the uh, topic of our adapters. The DCB adapter is a, a swing adapter which you can mount for compacts. So that means if some of you has those compact cameras, and in this case I would recommend to have a quite good compact camera, so we are talking about a good Canon model like S110, 120, S200, or Nikon P310, 330. A very good one is also Sony RX100, RX200. I think 200 is already the new model. So don't take really the cheap models. Take really a, 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 serious, or, yeah, a serious good model, and then you can combine these Also here, with the DCB adapter, you switch it on, you align it once, upwards, downwards, and then, depending on the adjustments, what you did on your camera, you can switch it on. And the big advantage is, just pull it over, you can still use your telescope looking through, and if you want to take a picture, take down the camera. Also, a solution could be a system camera with a special uh, lens. In this case, it's a, uh, an Olympus. It's an OMD5. Yeah, it's an M M5. Also, the M1, all those Panasonic models, they are working quite well. As long as you use a lens which is short enough that you have space enough to mount it there. So that means, in this case, we are talking about a 20, 20 millimeter lens, which means 40 millimeter. Um, in the, um, in the full format. So something about 40, 50 millimeter full format fits as long as it's not too long. This is very important. But also here, for this solution, we have now the TLS APO. And the TLS APO is that what we see now, definitely the most serious way to take I would say, professional pictures in the end of the day. Because here you have the opportunity now to mount really high-end cameras. Sir. The TLS APO adapter is a 30 millimeter lens, which is connected to the, to the camera via the T2 mount. The T2 mount is a quite old system from the 80s, which connects 
the threat of our TLS APO to the bayonet of the different kind of systems. We, as, the, as company Swarovski Optic, we offer rings for Canon, for Nikon, for Sony, and for, for Micro Four Third. For all other cameras, you have to, to buy them in, in photo stores, shops, wherever you want. Um, but that could be sometimes a little bit tricky. So uh, the T2 adapters are not really available all over the world, I would say. Sometimes it makes sense to, to order them via internet. I think you have some, some here as well. Uh, but this could be sometimes a little bit tricky, so take care. When you order a TLS APO, you still need a connection to your camera, which is a T2 mount. And then it's more or less very similar to a normal lens. So in your bag, you have the TLS APO, you take off the lens here, you mount it. And then just pull it over, screw it tight, and that's it. So as I mentioned already, it's a 30 millimeter pancake lens. So there is no outer focus, and there is no uh, flexible aperture. This is probably the, the biggest disadvantage. So you have to live with the aperture which is coming out of the system. Let me summarize now the advantages and yeah, disadvantages. One of the main advantages, and this is what, what photographers tell me all the time, for, we, we are coming from Tyrol, we have high mountains. So if you, if you have an 800mm lens, and we have them in our uh, office as well, it definitely makes fun to use an 800mm lens, no doubt about that. When you are on a football area, Formula One race, or somewhere where you can really place your camera, where you can place your lens, and where you can work and you know, okay, this is my playground. If you want to take a picture from Ibex, Robux, Chamois, or something else, so that means you have to go up to the mountain, then we're talking about weight. And that means five, six, seven, eight kilos when you have an 800 mil lens. In our case, we're talking about 2.2 kilos. And this is definitely a huge advantage in these, in these areas. High focal length, 750 to 3,500 millimeter, as I mentioned already, depending on the system, what you use, what kind of uh, crop factor you have. That means, especially when we have a look later on to the images, you can be further away to take pictures from animals in their natural habitat. So they realize probably that you are there. Any, anyhow, if it's, if it's a bird or if it's a leopard or jeopard, they realize you are there, but you're not in their area that you are really danger, a danger for them. They still can uh, smell you. Yeah, 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 for sure. D depending on the wind, depending on the wind. Um, as I mentioned already, the quick change between observing and taking pictures. And also this is an advantage. Taking pictures means early in the morning or late in the evening, probably not really at noon. When you walk up to the mountain, it's a time area. So that means in these times where you cannot take pictures, you still have a high-end telescope with you, which you can use for observation. Yeah, and this is very, very rare, especially when we talk about Swarovski Optic, we are cheaper in this, in this case than really the big, the big lenses. This is definitely a cost-effective story. So the price here, I think you have it in front of you, uh, which is the, the uh, offer here at the moment. Uh, what are the uh, disadvantages? Depending on this huge focal length, you have to take care that you have no vibrations in the system. That means you need a short shutter speed that you work against those vibrations because there is still some movement from the mirror. Um, in the beginning, I used these uh, time release. Or, uh, but honestly, it's very tricky when you want to take a picture of a moment and you, wanna, and you use the time release, the moment is gone. Low depth of focus. Depending on these huge focal length, the area of the sharpness is really, really small. And this is definitely the challenge in the beginning, to, to learn it a little bit, 
to you know, what kind of direction do I have to focus that it goes further and closer. And this is really something what you have to train by yourself. So this is not something which works from one minute to another, but the connection between this finger and those two fingers, they, that needs a little training, that needs a little bit of time. Limitations, I mentioned already, when you use full-frame cameras, you have these vignetting. It doesn't mean that it's not working, but you have those vignettings. Don't be afraid of it. You can cut it out later on. No autofocus. Um, we have some professional photographers. They say autofocus is for beginners. So I wouldn't say that, but that, that's what they sometimes use. Um, especially on these long distances, sometimes also the autofocus on, on the other systems is not really working all the time. So, but nevertheless, it's a disadvantage. You have no autofocus. You have to focus by yourself. And no manual aperture. There is a certain kind of aperture which comes out because we have an, a fixed aperture inside which is used for the normal observation. And with this aperture, you have to live. I have a slide later on what kind of apertures you will achieve. That's it. <laughs>